you everybody for joining us this evening. Um, this is our annual budget hearing uh, in advance of the vote on the budget on May 21st. 21st. Um, and uh, so what we're going to do tonight is, is uh, run through the uh, budget. I'll give a, a brief introductory uh, remarks uh, and then uh, I'll turn it over to Tom to give a little more detail. Um, I'll just start by uh, describing, and I, I'm on the, I guess I'm the chair of the budget committee, um, so it's appropriate that I give the remarks. Um, I just want to spend a minute on the process that we go through to come up with the, um, the budget uh, every year. Um, it starts sort of at the beginning of the year with uh, our director uh, and his team really making an assessment of what resources they need, both, you know, uh, physical resources, people resources, uh, et cetera, in order to meet the needs of our patrons, in order to meet the needs of the community. Um, so it's a very bottoms up approach. What we don't do is take the prior year's budget and just assume that's what the budget should be for the next year or assume that it should be a similar increase to last year. We do a detailed analysis starting with Tom and his team to really look at what the needs are. Um, and then uh, Tom will come to the budget committee, which is a subcommittee of the board, um, and present uh, the budget and, and present what we do is we ask uh, Tom to work up several different scenarios. We ask him to work up a scenario where we keep the budget flat year over year, uh, no increase in the, uh, in the overall budget. We look to him to put together a budget that would have us be in line with the tax cap, which this year is I think, approximately 2%. Uh, and then we ask him for a, a third budget, which is sort of what, you know, if you had your wish list, what would it be? Um, and so that's our, that's sort of our starting point. And, and then we as a budget committee review that. Um, in those discussions, the, uh, the, the uh, high, the, the sort of budget that was the wish, which, which, ooh, I can't speak. The wish, the wish list budget um, uh, started at an increase, I think, of about six, six percent. Yeah, almost six. And a half. Um, about six and a half percent, and then, and through discussions with the budget committee, uh, we were able to get that down to a three point nine percent increase. So the budget committee looked at a flat scenario, a two percent up in the tax cap, and then the three point nine percent scenario. Long story short, we ended up going with the 3.9% increase scenario, which is in line with the increase that we saw last year. Um, the primary driver, as Tom will go through, is our salaries and related benefits costs. Uh, we, um, we are governed, all but three of our employees, I think, are governed under a union contract, mm -hmm. which was negotiated by the board and you know with the union uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and, that, and, and that has mandated increases. I would note that those mandated increases that we agreed to under that contract, um, we did an extensive analysis at the time looking at contracts that had been recently negotiated amongst different libraries in Westchester County that we felt were comparable to you know, our city and, and our library. And we were very much at the mid to lower point of those increases. Um, so, you know, and that, and that contract preceded one that had had very little increases coming out of the financial crisis. Um, and, and uh, you know, so that's the main driver of the increases. Tom will walk through the details. Um, if we had gone with a lower budget scenario, we effectively would have, um, at a flat scenario, we certainly would have had to cut um, our services and, and cut our operating time. Uh, you know, and, we, and at a 2% up scenario, we would have been able to meet the salary increases, but we, I think, if I remember, remember correctly, and Tom, Correct me if I'm wrong. We would have had to cut some of the temporary hours a little bit. We wouldn't have yes. been able to meet any of the, the the needs of our patrons as you know additional needs of our patrons as highlighted by the staff in the bottoms up analysis that we described. So so that's where we landed. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Tom to sort of run through the details. Um, thank you, Chuck. And um, as Chuck had indicated, our budget request will be voted on by the residents of New Rochelle on May 21st. Um, there are two aspects to this election as far as the library is concerned. The first element is our budget. We are asking for um, an increase of 3.9% over the current year's budget, which translates out to real dollars of $213,012.70. Um, and that, that increase is 3.9% in total. And we 
on an annual basis, we reach out to the city finance commissioner and ask um, the person holding that office to give us an analysis of what this budget means in terms of the average taxpayer. And according to the current um, city finance commissioner, Mark Zuli, he indicating, indicated that the increase will constitute for the average taxpayer of $14. Essentially, according to the finance department, um, each taxpayer in the city of New Rochelle pays $328.34 currently. With this budget, if it were to pass, would mean an increase of approximately $14, which would take the average taxpayer to a total of $341.60. Now, in terms of the specifics of the increase, Chuck mentioned that um, a large portion of the increase is truly non-discretionary. Um, and I would characterize that as approximately two thirds of the 213,000. Of that increase, $95,000 is an increase in full-time salary due to the collective bargaining agreement of 2.75. Chuck very um, articulately stated uh, the fact that uh, this contract has been placed for a number of years, it's comparable to our peers. He also indicated that the previous contract had been one that had been very modest. In fact, there were two years of 0% increases. And so we are very comfortable with this contract, with this increase for our full-time staff who work very hard, wear many hats, and are truly dedicated to our residents. So of this 213000 just over 95,000, again, is full-time salary increases. We see another 64,000 increase relating to fringe benefit accounts. That includes uh, the New York State Retirement Plan increase of $38,000, um, a medical plan ins insurance increase of $16,000, social security payment increases of just over $5,000, dental plan increases of approximately $4,500,000. Um, we also are fielding an increase in our Westchester library system dues, the due schedule approved by the WLS directors group as well as the WLS board of trustees call for an increase for New Rochelle Public Library of $5,500,000. Now there are also some non-discretionary increases I want to share with you. The largest of these non-discretionary increases relates to the decision by the board to approve my recommendation of the library creating a full-time archivist position for our library and for our community. Um, we currently have a part-time position and uh, we're finding that our collection is just not being uh, um, organized, accessioned, uh, digitized, made available to the community, not through any lack of effort, but because we don't have um, um, a full-time person devoting her or his time towards this task. Uh, as you know, the city of New Rochelle does not have an historical society. We function as that historical society. And as such, we have been the very fortunate recipient of many donations from, uh, from people in the community that relate to uh, photographs, um, other graphic representations. We have gotten many, many um, manuscript collections from organizations and groups. We're just not able to keep up with uh, the new accessions as well as the material in our collection. With this position, we are asking for an increase essentially of $50,000. And we are building on the part-time monies that are already in the budget, um, but we'll be asking for 50,000 to um, make the salary a full-time salary, as well as the appropriate benefit package. So that's the most significant non-discretionary increase we're asking the community to consider at the May 21st vote. There are some smaller increases as well. Um, one is a $5,000 increase to pay for our staff to con continue to perform outreach at the New Rochelle uh, School District open house, meet the parents nights. We are very anxious to connect with our community, particularly our school population. We have great resources 
for our children as well as the adults. And we found this has been a very successful effort. We would like to build on this effort and make sure that we're represented at every uh, meet the parent night that the school district schools happen to uh, schedule. So that's just over $5,000 for that. We are also looking for um, um, a doubling of our um, internet broadband. As you folks know, well, libraries are about books, but they're also about technology and access to information. And the internet and our broadband is, of course, one of the major components in allowing our community, many of whom don't have computers, don't have internet at home, to come in and use our computers and access computers, whether it be for homework, it could be lifelong learning, it could be health research, it could be job search, um, um, all sorts of things. So we're doubling our broadband access. That will increase our, um, our budget line in this area for $7,500. Our security guards who are tremendous, who help keep our building safe and um, comfortable for everybody. Uh, they have not had a raise since 2014. Um, given the fact that the minimum wage has been going up each year, we think it's incumbent upon us to, um, to pay our guards what they're worth and to make certain that we're able to retain their services. Uh, and so um, that increase for, the, for our security um, staff is $6,500 as well. And um, basically, that's, that's it as far as the, the budget. And again, um, I want you to consider the fact that relative to our library and other Westchester libraries, we are, let me make certain I get the right statistic, um, the, we are the fourth lowest per capita in terms of spending monies on library materials in the county out of 38 libraries. In terms of um, total per capita budget support, we are 12th lowest in the county. Um, and in terms of paid staff per 2,000 residents in the county, we are the lowest. Um, so we think those statistics that were furnished to us by the Westchester Library System um, indicate that we try to run a lean, a lean ship. We are cognizant of the, the, um, the hard-earned monies that you give us. We try to use it wisely, carefully. We um, uh, depend upon uh, the monies that you give us to help us uh, uh, grant, uh, look for uh, grants and other uh, fundraising activities. We're lucky enough to have our foundation and our friends provide lots and lots of money to help us do the extras. Many of the physical improvements you see throughout the building are through New York State grants, but the match is almost always provided by our foundation and sometimes by our friends. Um, and our activities are, are you know, we're a busy library. Um, I could um, run off things like we have the most patron visits in the county and the second most reference questions answered in the county, um, second most internet terminals in the county, third most uh, library card holders in the county, third most hours open in the county, uh, fourth most public internet sessions in the county, and the fifth most programs scheduled in the county. So we're, we're trying to make a difference in terms of all those key indicators, both for uh, our traditional collections, books and music, um, uh, um, uh, video, uh, DVDs, as well as online resources, as well as offering with partnerships throughout the city and the county, social service opportunities, and great programming, cultural, educational, um, technological programming. And most of our programming is paid um, by our friends organization. So um, I think I'm done. I've shared a lot with you, maybe too much, but that's where we stand and we would be open to any questions if people have them. Thank you, Tom. Do we have anybody um, in the uh, audience that has any questions? Uh, please, uh, if you come up, if you don't mind coming up, so because it, it, it's taped. Yeah, we're... Leave a sign Do you have the sign in? Give the sign. Yeah. We can get it's Beth Akasella. After she speaks. Yeah, after she speaks. Thanks, Jessica. Okay. Hi. Uh, my question is why. Is that working? I think so. Hi. My question is why um, will it cost five thousand dollars 
to volunteer at um, Meet the Teacher nights or parent nights? It's it's not a volunteer activity. It's our it's our staff members being paid to to work at those events. Perfect. That was my question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other uh, questions from anyone in the audience? Going once, going twice. Okay. Uh, I think that's our only item of business, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Uh, somebody want to make a motion to adjourn the budget meeting? I make a motion to adjourn the budget meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you everybody for joining us tonight for our regular um, library board meeting. Uh, I think first item of business is the approval of the minutes, which Tom emailed around. I think I sent you a slight correction. Did you? Right? I don't. Did I? I think I did. Happy to hear it again. No. Mm -hmm. Noted as such. Let me look. WLS report that Francis encouraged the board to consider screening. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that was the only thing. Yeah, under um, yeah under Francis's report, I just wanted to note that you had encouraged us to consider oh, a yeah, screening yeah, of the documentary Resilience. Oh, so, that's what the email was about. Yeah, so oh, if you could okay. just add that to the WLS report. Thank you. Thank you, Indira. Just to follow up on that, I, I did uh, talk to Elena about it, and then uh, she's got in touch with uh, Tom. And, oh, good. Uh, we should be arranging for a screen. Oh, okay. great. So, wonderful. We've already had multiple screenings, but yeah, we yeah, can do exactly. it again. Absolutely. Does anybody else have any uh, other comments on the minutes? <clears throat> okay. Can I get a motion to? Mm, motion to approve minutes like, with the amendment. As noted about Brazilian. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes approved as amended. <clears throat> uh, financial reports, statistics, anything um, to know? At this point in time, because we're meeting so much earlier, I don't have a formal set of documents, but I will say that, um, oh, we do. Sorry. I we guess it wasn't. Uh, yes. So, um, thing I noticed, it's not a big deal, but I noticed um, that in March, um, the main, our reference questions and everything went down. It's like 8,000, 8,000, 8,000, and then it dips to 7,000 in March. I was just wondering. You know, I, I, Jean is, um, Miss Manning oh, is you know. raising her hand. Got it. Could be. Okay. I mean, it's it's not a, I just was. I just happened to notice it. I don't. <laughs> um, in terms of our finances, uh, I, I will say that this has been a challenging year because of many unexpected capital expenses. Um, but um, we are actually in fairly good shape in terms of percentage of year. Uh, left as, uh, as compared to the percentage of monies left in the budget. Um, there may be still some efforts that will be made by, by um, uh, Gene Manning to make certain that all the accounts that are in the negative be, be in the, certainly in positive by the end of the year, which of course um, calls for board members to sign uh, warrants that will indicate those sorts of efforts. But we're in fairly good shape despite the fact, again, of many, many expenses that, that, that were unexpected in regards to our facility. Thank you for the tight management of the, of the expenditures. Um, are there anything you wanted to highlight from a statistics perspective or no? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, w, L, S, LS, okay, okay. Yeah, I have a few things to um, to bring you up to date on what we are doing in Amsford, and uh, so I might take a few minutes. Uh, first, um, we had a, our last meeting was last Tuesday on the uh, April thirtieth, and um, we had after a few housekeeping things, we uh, we looked at the financial reports of the organizations the first quarter, um, 
as well as the, the audit report from the committee. And uh, I must say that the, uh, the meeting of the audit committee is the, is the first meeting that I audited. <laughs> I went there and, and, and attended it. And so the, the overall picture is that um, the organization is just in good health financially and the resources are being well managed. Uh, so that uh, the board is quite happy with that. Uh, the second thing is we looked very briefly at the LLS system annual report for last year. Uh, that uh, the, the board looked at it and took note of it. I must say, uh, and this is uh, the record, that I have not read the report. It's on the record. Uh, it's got to be on the record. On the record. Oh, okay, yeah, I have not looked. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. Just make sure you <laughs> The cameras are filming as oh, you speak. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, I can I, I can tell you a little joke. Let's put that on the record. I remember <laughs> an outstanding politician in one part of the world I came from. Um, uh, the, the the country belongs to it. Just adopted a constitution for the country, a long constitution and so on. So uh, this outstanding politician was interviewed on TV uh, and said, "Mr. Secretary General, what do you think of the new constitution?" And he said, oh, it is an excellent constitution, although I haven't read it. <laughs> uh, so I must say that the, uh, the annual system report is a good one. And I'm going to read it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we took note of that. Um, another point I want to raise is, you remember we, we talked about the, um, the problems that the Austin Library had and, and also uh, Greenberg with the uh, virus. Um, the, that matter was taken up again uh, by, by the board uh, following the discussion that uh, the, the presentation made by the director of the Austin Library. Uh, one thing that caught my attention and I raised it at the meeting itself was said that the communication, that's one of the aspects of the problems that they had, the communication between the WLS uh, IT and the Austinian staff did not always provide the information the library needed to share with their staff, trustees, and patrons. It took four weeks to bring the situation to a total resolution. And so the Austinian board is now considering options uh, and other measures in order to, uh, to, to address this, uh, this, this situation so that it doesn't occur again. Um, Following this particular point, um, the board has a had a discussion, considerably <laughs> lengthy discussion about the nature of the attack that took place in Ossining and Greenberg, uh, and whether the law enforcement uh, authorities were informed, the IT response, staffing, etc. And um, then we requested uh, the, the executive director and the IT director, Kalwari, Bob Kalwari, to, to develop a statement regarding the event and this resolution, and to prepare a budget and a plan of action for how to guide against future issues and provide a clearer communication and backup support for the member libraries. And so I'll try to follow up on that. So the um, Kalwari gave us um, a brief progress report on how they are proceeding in that score. Um, we took note of it, but um, it was just a progress report. So we asked that the, the statement and the plan that they have in mind should be put in writing uh, so that we, you know, we, we, we can read it and get maybe a better picture of it. Uh, it is going to involve a budget, um, maybe uh, probably $80,000. I don't, don't quote me on that, but I think that was a figure being thrown around. But this does not involve uh, extra money being requested, but this resource is going to be raised from within uh, the other items that are probably underspent. Uh, going forward, we, the, uh, the director might request that a certain budget allocation be made for, for that. So this is a point that is being taken quite, quite seriously because we would like uh, this kind of problem, any similar kind of problem with the libraries and cooperation between the libraries and the WLC is something that should, uh, uh, should be taken seriously. And then problems that are, arise uh, should be addressed um, yeah, promptly. So that, that's one. Um, the second point is more of information. The 
trustee from uh, West, uh, from White Plains, Miss Hope First, had resigned early in the year. Um, and so White Plains recommended another candidate, an outstanding candidate, very, very competent, uh, Miss Matthew Sarah. As she was introduced to the board, uh, she was uh, uh, approved, the appointment was accepted, and she was sworn in. <laughs> so uh, the District 11 now has a representative. Um, the third thing I want to mention is arising from the report that the executive director gave uh, to the board. I first started to, to, by talking about the, uh, the outcome of the migration. He says that uh, that exercise went very well because it took a lot of uh, uh, involvement by the staff at, a, at, at, uh, at headquarters there and also by the, the staff of the libraries. But he says, although a number of issues still need to be resolved, the number of outstanding issues have diminished. And Evergreen has already shown promise as a public service tool with greater control. And I hope that our library can agree with that. I hope, that, but I, that's why I want to, I want to, to, to highlight it. Uh, so the, the board is watching this, you know, this migration and the aftermath of it and see how, how well this thing is, is, is settling in. Um, Dr. Keshna informed us that uh, he has been asked to, to serve on a panel with the Westchester County Association regarding service in the new digital age with the role of the library being a digital access anchor for technology and information. Uh, this guy is involved in so many committees. <laughs> this is one of, one of them. And, and it is good that uh, we have a foot in, in that door. Um, he also mentioned in passing um, earlier on that um, the San Francisco Public Library had eliminated the use of overdue fees. It caught my attention, maybe it's not new to you. Uh, he says that recent reports have found that fines do not ensure the returns of materials and actually discriminate against groups struggling with poverty, homelessness, and re-entry into society. I, I wonder what our experience is on, on that, but uh, that, that was passed on to the, uh, to the board as a matter of information, and some board members took an interest in it. We've discussed that. You did? Okay. We have. Um, we never came to. No, um, I'm actually hoping that when the policy committee okay. meets again, you there'll be a series of circulation changes that we will be recommending. One of them we would like the policy committee to consider mm. is choosing to um, not to pro uh, fine um, children or teens that borrow material. Um, quite frankly, there are four or five libraries and Westchester library system that have done so. It's proven to be successful. And the studies that you mentioned, Francis, I was at a, um, a national public library conference in Philadelphia um, last year and indicated that, um, that uh, fines don't always provide the impetus for people to return materials and in fact provide uh, barriers for people who are struggling with using yes. the library. And there are countless examples of young people who can't use our library because for one reason or another, their cards have been maxed out. It's, it's troubling. Um, it's really troubling on a lot of different levels, but that's something that I hope the yeah. policy committee and the board will consider. You guys um, are meeting, right? Meeting on Tuesday. Okay, cool. That's perfect timing. Yeah, all right. So, you know, this has been taken up at uh, the trustees level as well. Uh, another thing is the Director of Public Information, or Innovation and Engagement, Ms. Elena Falcone, a very vivacious and active uh, staff member. Uh, she says that uh, our department is responsible for outreach programs, and she spoke about one of the recent programs that uh, the department is focusing on, the community conversations. And she says that this program was designed to create a robust discussion utilizing unique and powerful role of libraries to provide a neutral space and to act as a catalyst in bringing community agencies and other interested parties together around specific topics. Now it is in the context of this that um, the question of community mental health issues uh, was raised um, and, and how it developed into a topic of interest. 
Uh, and so um, she mentioned again the importance of libraries being involved uh, in this uh, community health uh, issues, particularly through the use of the, um, uh, the, the film, the uh, resilience, which I said uh, our library is interested in, uh, in seeing. Uh, she says that uh, showing this film uh, around libraries has generated a lot of interest. And as a result, a Westchester Resilience Coalition has been created. I don't know too much about that. Maybe she will give us some, some details about it. And this coalition is, is, is intended to help build awareness uh, of the community about public health issues. Another thing we were informed is that um, the response to the Celebrating Westchester Libraries breakfast, the response to that has been pretty good. Um, and as a result, um, the WLS is one of the 24 uh, recipients of the National X Prize Communities uh, Competition Award of uh, half a million dollars. Mm. Uh, so that means uh, WLS has something like $21,000 uh, as a result of that. I, I don't know too much about the X-Prize Communities Competition. Maybe I'll, I'll get more information on that. Lastly, um, Elena brought to our attention and asked us to um, bring this to the attention of the libraries, the various um, learning resources available on the WLS uh, website. Um, the most significant of it, at least of late, is the learning upgrade. Uh, I think she's going to be distributing this uh, pamphlet around to the libraries. Uh, this learning upgrade is an easy, fun learning app that helps improve reading and maths for people of any age. Uh, it uses songs, videos, games, and rewards, and ideal for adult learners, etc. cetera. Uh, so she talked quite uh, uh, enthusiastically about this. Um, and uh, as I said, uh, she plans to distribute this, um, this information to the libraries and, and try to encourage our patrons to, to make use of uh, these resources that the library offers. I think that that's about it. I probably talked too much, too much time than I need to. Uh, thank you. You said community you. conversations, you said? They're yes, having? yes. And they're hosting them? No, community, no, this is, uh, it, it is one of the, uh, the, the programs that they created. I believe that they're hosting that, um, but it's relatively new. Mm -hmm. And it is within that context conversation, I have to suppose that the conversation, the conversation takes place in the libraries where the community is brought together to talk about um, a, an issue of, 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 of interest, one of them being the, national, the, uh, the uh, mental health, another one is probably opioid uh, addiction, and the other ones could be, I don't know, domestic violence or whatever it is. I think we should do that. So issues like that. Under your yeah. Feet. I think we should do that. Um, so I got the impression that this is relatively new. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'll, I'm going to be watching how it, how it goes. I'm just flagging it out, so if there's an interest in it, I can, I can pursue that. We've talked about the opioid. I feel like, Dan, you, one of the first things you raised when you came on board was about the opioid mental health and sort of thinking about ways. So any way we can partner with someone who has like a program and a structure yeah. mm -hmm. and we just provide the space, then we're all, we're all winning. There's so many. Yeah. I mean, it, um, it, yeah sure. it's, so it's part of my community relations report. Talk about... Um, I'll talk about it in the community. <laughs> <laughs> your notes. And I'll, I'll tie back. But I, I also want to add something about uh, the learning upgrade because yes, yes. um, Elena sent me the information. It's it's Good. it's something that's actually really awesome, especially for adult education learners take, trying to take their GED. You know, working parents that are really trying to find the resources, unable to go to the class. Uh, just I'll read a quick description real quick. It's a learning upgrade is an easy, fun and learning app that helps improve reading and math skills. It uses songs, videos, games and rewards. Ideal for adult, adult learners, English language learners. So it's also incorporated in Spanish and other languages as well. And students from grade school. So students from our schools can use it and it's completely free. 
the app is available on both Android and iOS devices. Uh, all you have to do is download the app, and there's a special code that WLS has, which is 3355738. They put that in. And if you sign up, they're raffling a free um, iPad or something of that nature. Um, and uh, you would complete at least three lessons to go in and show your progress. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good free resource that is available. I'm going to post it somewhere. I think they're going to distribute them. Yeah, they talked about it at the breakfast, they're going to be at the library. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but you can take Can we post this on, on our library website? Sure, why not? I'm, I'm wondering if WLS has a, um, a, a link or a PDF or a. They're actually encouraging, a copy of that? Uh, from my understanding, they're encouraging the local libraries and community-based organizations to put it in their e-blasts, newsletters, uh, places of worship, to use it and incorporate and encourage people. They, they will provide uh, the PDF of rack cards and all that stuff that you can promote um, yourself um, and just provide information. So. That's pretty neat. So many resources. Yeah. Good. Thank you. That's it. Um, the next item, I think, is the president's report, and I'm going to uh, turn it over to you, Tom. I don't have a specific report. Thank you, Chuck. Um, relative to my report as director, first start with grants. As you folks know, the circulation desk is nearly complete. We're very excited about that, and that was the result of a $275,000 grant through the state and a $92,000 match through our amazing foundation, whose gala is coming up on Thursday. Uh, so there are still tickets available if anybody's interested. It's a worthy cause. And uh, we're nearly done with commissioning the desk. We just have a few, I believe, minor issues that relate to uh, moving our computers over and bringing, bringing down the walls and and bringing people in. We're very excited. It looks great. We, our staff feels that at long last they have a, um, a modern functional space to use both to serve the public as well as a back office area, which they've never had before. Um, so we're, we're excited and it looks really good too. Um, so the next step will be hopefully next week, the desk will be commissioned. The temporary desk will be taken down. Um, we'll start the process of, uh, re of installing new security gates. Um, somewhere down the line, we'll, we'll also install our patron self-checkout elements too as well. Um, we'll have a security gate that will be installed and we'll also have um, a more attractive sort of um, like a band or a sign above the library as well for the public. So we're, we're nearly there. I believe our, our, our budget numbers look pretty good and um, Stay tuned, something really attractive will be opening up for everybody's use very soon. We are. Will we do a, um, like a ribbon cutting at some point we, with the foundation? We will. Okay. Uh, Chris Sellen, great question, Chuck. Uh, Chris Sellen has asked me if that's possible. We said absolutely. Because the foundation was a uh, key pivotal player, we, we need to have that ribbon cutting just to celebrate the fact that we're finally able to accomplish this and to celebrate yeah. the foundation's ability to draw that kind of financial support we got, we got, we got a significant right and so we'll have to have our the, our the right our state leaders, legislators yes right and and we have a, another grant um heading our way 160 140 thousand dollars which will allow us to begin the renovations on the second floor and the foundation will be matching with seventy eight thousand. and we're hoping to apply for more state grant money um, to continue the second floor renovation. The unfortunate uh, factor is that this current year, um, the state of New York had um, an extraordinarily high amount of money in the um, library construction program. Um, it's been reduced back to its original status of $12 million, which means our county will see just under $700,000 as opposed to 1.2 million this year. It made a big difference. It allowed us to obtain money as well as uh, peer libraries throughout the county. But we're going to continue to go for these improvements to make our library, you know, a more um, functional, appealing place—a place that people are comfortable using. Um, so, so that one hundred and forty thousand dollars, we think we'll see 
God willing, um, sometime in August, or early September. We also have a much smaller grant for the Huguenot Children's Library. Um, that is $8,625. We'll be matching, we ourselves, $2,875. And that will allow us to install a new gas furnace in our building, which the furnace is now just about 25 years old. So it, we need to do it. We've been nursing it along. So we'll, we'll be seeing that in the near future. Um, as you folks know, thanks to the good offices of Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins and uh, Dr. Lou with Gray, who provided a great opening, um, uh, opening door. Um, we have access, we hope, to $100,000 through the state of New York uh, economic development grant called EDAP. And um, we just finished the grant documentation tonight. Thank you, Yadira, for witnessing that as a notary public. And we're hopeful that we'll get a positive response in the very near future. Um, on less positive news, um, you folks know that our library had made a pitch to be the home for the future co-working and um, business incubation center uh, through the downtown redevelopment initiative, the monies that were um, granted to, uh, to the city of New Rochelle through the state of New York, $10 million. We haven't gotten official word, which is disappointing, but the um, word on the street is that we didn't get it. So we will continue with the idea of trying to find a co-working space in our building or in, a, a, or in some sort of a attached facility. We think it's something the community could really use. Um, and so we'll continue to keep our eyes open. It's, is there going to be a co-working space? It's just we didn't get it, but there's going to be one? I, here I, Part of the proposal includes a co-working, maybe two actually, I thought, um, but definitely one. Okay. Elsewhere. Um, and I will just reiterate, which I've said I think many times, that the wonderful thing about the DRI process is that it brought to light many really um, you know, great initiatives and um, uncovered deep interests that I think we wouldn't have seen otherwise. And this is one of them, Tom. So don't be disheartened. No, I'm not. And good. And also, um, you know, we, Yadir and I sat on day. that committee. We had to re recuse ourselves so we, we couldn't scream and shout <laughs> and as we wanted. Um, but I think that it's just a wonderful idea to have a co-working entity in the building somewhere. And I think there's probably other funding available for that, which keep your eyes open, as you say, and we all will do the same. Thank you. Um, uh, next item on the agenda is our election, May 21st. The budget hearing has come and gone, and I discussed the fact that the library is asking for an increase. So, um, uh, so folks, please be aware, May 21st, trustees uh, budget will be voted on. And, um, and as part of our year-to-year uh, -year effort, we reach out to neighborhood association civic groups and ask permission to be invited to attend their meetings in order that we have the opportunity to talk about our, our budget um, initiative. And to date, we have three visits. We have been at Glenwood Lake, Neighborhood Association, Residence Park, Neighborhood Association, and the East End Neighborhood Association. They all seem to go fairly well. We have three more that are scheduled. Sometimes they appear at the, at the 11th hour, and I'll keep you all posted. But we have one Thursday evening, which will be the Reform Club, New Rochelle Reform Club, and the uh, New Rochelle Confederation of Neighborhood Associations be at the American Legion Hall on Thursday night. It is also, unfortunately, the night of our foundation gala, and most of us have been committed, but Whitney and I, maybe Corey, too, yeah. are go these two fine people, even though they have tickets, will be attending the, um, the meeting in order to talk about the library budget um, vote and also discuss, introduce themselves relative to their candidacy for the upcoming May 21st election. We also have another neighborhood association meeting at five o'clock this, uh, this Saturday at Mount Joy and one more Stratton, Stratton Hill. And is it this Saturday, Mount Joy? I thought it was next Saturday. Isn't it this Saturday? I think it's the 18th. Oh, yeah, it is it's the 18th. Saturday. Okay, yeah. that's good. All right. Saturday the 18th. So don't show up. This no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, the there's one? another one. The Stratton Hill? That's, uh, uh, I have it here. Let's see. I should just look. There's Mount Joy, Stratton Hill, and then the Neighborhood Confederation. Yeah. So the ninth. Right. Right. When's the Stratton Hill? I think it's the 20th. You're right. It's um, right. It's, it's the 16th is um, uh, Stratton Hill Neighborhood Association, 
at Young oh. Israel of Scarsdale. And thank yeah. you, Chuck. Um, Mountjoy is the 18th Saturday at five o'clock. We're paying attention. Once yeah. a while, we have to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not chipping up. Um, well, there haven't been updates in a while. So Stratton Hill is uh, five sixteen at what time? Five sixteen at seven thirty p.m. at Young Israel of Scarsdale on Weaver Street. And we've been instructed to, um, we're on the agenda. Yeah. They have asked that um, any candidates who are running for office, not um, sort of a politic, that's their rule, but I certainly think for the all the candidates can attend that night and at least introduce themselves, if, if nothing else. But we also go to support the discussion the budget. of the budget. Right, and so. in and, and, and that role, you're, I would hope that you would come. All, every support board member. I would hope that you would support yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so that's that's where we stand as far as the neighborhood association process is. It's a little disappointing. Last year we had a few more so. groups. We did, and this year this is probably the the fewest number of meetings that we've had in my 14 years here, which is disappointing. And I, I, I would love to find a way to try to reinvigorate this process and reintroduce ourselves in the community and give us an opportunity to talk about the the, the budget about which is important. Uh, the election of trustees, equally important, and just talk about the library, what we have to offer. And so many of these meetings, um, actually not a lot is discussed relative to budgets and far more is discussed about what's going on at the library, programs, services, you know, issues that might relate to uh, development, uh, all, all those sorts of things come up. And the budget's important, but it's almost secondary. It, it gives us a chance to sort of toot our own horn and just share with people. So if we could find a way to sort of reconnect with other groups, it would, it would be great. Um, let's see. Um, just as far as our friends, our great friends group is concerned, um, the book sale uh, just completed. Uh, the next one, June 7th, June 8th. The friends board meeting is tomorrow at 1 p.m. if anybody's available. And the friends um, on, a, on an annual basis will hold a volunteer luncheon. Uh, the date is May 29th. Invitations haven't been sent out, but certainly all trustees are welcome to attend as well as our esteemed WLS representative. At, at, I believe it's at Posto 22. So um, stay tuned for those invitations. They're usually a lot of fun. And it's a great opportunity to thank the friends for their extraordinary service day in, day out. Um, uh, relative to what they do for the library, both financially and just as advocates. Um, the foundation, I've already mentioned, the gala is this Thursday evening. It's turning out to be a huge success. Last I heard, over 350 guests were planning to attend. Um, it's at the Green Tree. It's been moved from another um, a, a beach club because uh, they had the foresight to know that they were not going to, that this particular site wouldn't be able to hold the people that wanted to attend. So, um, so uh, it, it'll be, a, a, Thank I, you. I think it's six, isn't it? Six. It's at six. Six. Is it? Is oh, it? Yeah. Anyways, but it promises, um, you know, there'll be um, the, and I think it's worth mentioning that um, it's really a look at the past and a, a view of the future. And they plan to honor um, the founders of the foundation, Leslie Demas, um, Bill Handelman, and Lynn Green, all people who are still volunteering 25 years later because the foundation was founded 25 years ago. And so those three terrific people will be honored, as well as the people that created the partnership for the Huguenot Children's Library, which will be merged into the foundation sometime this year. And there are three couples that were instrumental in reviving this building and bringing it back online as a functional building and as a children's library, Tom and Teresa Leghorn, uh, the Ronins and the McCabes. So all uh, great people as well. So it's another reason to attend to thank these people for all their work on behalf of our libraries. And, and I, gotta, I gotta say that same night, I mean, it's fantastic to hear those numbers that uh, people in our community and outside are coming out that same night is also the YMCA Gala, That's right. And, yeah. and the Westchester Humane Society oh Gala. And yet we have a fantastic turnout. Um, so kudos. To wow, that is amazing. I knew the YMCA. It's just amazing. But people are, according to what I've heard, they expect that there'll even be more um, people choosing to attend at the 11th hour. And they say they can handle it. So right. that's, that's good news. Francis? 
I must say, putting on another hat, as president of Rotary Club, we contribute uh, made a donation to the uh, foundation towards the, yep. uh, the, the convening of the, uh, the gala. Three hundred thousand. I was going to be really nervous. <laughs> it's like I didn't know the road. Three hundred thousand. Wow. Yeah. 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 Something happened God with that treasury you. that I wasn't yeah. aware of, and, I, and I'm a Rotarian. All right. I guess it was a big, big night at Foxwoods. Um, <laughs> you guys put on a great gala, by the way. It was like to the point, and we were at it. It was great. I learned from you. Agreed. It was a great night. Um, there, are, there are two more foundation board meetings coming up. One is May 20th, which will be um, the, typically the opportunity for us to present our budget request for next year. The major component of that is, of course, the $78,000 grant match for our second floor renovation. We are looking to continue our extremely successful um, and ever growing um, in terms of popularity museum pass program. And there may be a few other. Um, um, elements too. There's money left over. They still haven't given me a, a, an exact count for what we have access to of other programs that um, the library could use their uh, financial support. And um, in, in your packet, I just want to point out that I, I prepared a potential library board meeting schedule for next year. We don't need to take action on it tonight, but I'd ask you to look at it you know, make certain the dates are correct. If there are any conflicts relative to any religious holidays or other holidays, maybe we can vote in June. Sure, I'm done. Thank you. Something about the uh, neighborhood association meetings. Why not hold them with the library in as much as they discuss library issues? I'm sorry, Francis. The, um, the neighborhood association meetings. Because they're in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Then, usually at somebody's house or like a community yeah. space in their neighborhood. It, and like globally, I feel like it's not the only topic on the agenda. Oh, I like see. I feel like it's usually, usually like there's parameters. Yeah. So they'll say like you have five minutes, you, you have 10 minutes. minutes. So uh, okay. to get everybody to leave the neighborhood, not that it's far, but. Well, Whitney has already found a um, mistake I made and the date. So um, that's why Which I want you all to look at it. Uh, look at the last three months. Double May. And May. <laughs> May was so darn good, we're revisiting it. Sorry. It's a baker's dozen, 13 months. Yeah. Um, I just want to, in the transitional flurry here, um, isn't there an event May 20th at the WLS event? It was like oh, a, a, a talk the on the... Yeah, it's about um, building libraries. I know I can't go though. Space planning. By the by. I just thought it would be. No, helpful. I thought that was good. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You were insert, you know, yeah. as a presidential, like you guys should go. Anybody that can go, I encourage to go. It was really interesting. <laughs> yep, I think Whitney, you registered, and I registered. Corey. 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 I am registered. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So. But now I'm. But but the foundation's board meeting is that night. Um, oh, these things I don't know which one I signed up for. <laughs> <laughs> these things. <laughs> we, we, uh, signed up for. I have to look. I, I think it'd be great if there's a person or two could go. Yeah. I can't go. I thought I, I could go. I yeah. can't. I'll try to go to one of them. I don't know which one yet. Um, what's that? He'll go to the board. Okay. Okay. okay, perfect. Oh, good. Okay. Thank Wait, you. which one? Wait, you're going to go to the list? Okay, so maybe I'll go to the foundation to the meeting. Done. Tag team. <laughs> and then if you could bring back, like, yep. some back knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, I think next, do you have a personnel report? I, I do, a fairly brief one. Okay. Um, uh, in terms of a new staff, I'm asking the board to pass a motion that would allow us to hire a page um, who is working in the tech services area. Her name is Cassandra Chen. Her start date was March 23rd. Her salary is $12 per hour. So I could I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the page as noted. Can Second. we get us all in favor? Aye. Thank you. Um, um, a, a resignation ties to the hire. Um, um, I'd like a board motion to accept the resignation of Jishan Jiffrey 
who sadly, great page, great person, left us to go on to bigger and better things, including marriage. Um, <laughs> um, her last day was also the, the 28th of March. Um, her salary as, as she departed was $12 per hour. I'll make a motion to uh, accept the resignation. Can I get Aye. a second? second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I think it's uh, worth noting that one person um, is missing tonight and that you might have known is noticed as Mary Kane Pasacrita, who is a senior library clerk. Um, Mary retired as of March 30th of this year and we will miss her. Mm -hmm. um, we had a wonderful goodbye party for her a few Fridays ago and um, Sarah was kind enough to be able to attend to say goodbye to Sarah. And we read a letter that checked that check wrote. Um, You're well, being generous. Too. Well, anyway, <laughs> I, I surfaced the idea. You wrote the letter. Okay. Um, anyway, so um, I would ask for a motion to accept the retirement of Mary Kane Pasacrita. Do we have to? Uh, sadly, we do because Mary is home and enjoying a new yeah. life. <laughs> She's living her best and life. Probably so not yes. missing us. No, maybe a little bit. Her salary was fifty six thousand three hundred forty four dollars. Uh, Make a motion to uh, accept the, the retirement of uh, Mary. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, move on to committee reports, budget committee. We've already covered that. <laughs> we, we beat that one to death tonight. Um, uh, building and grounds committee, Sarah. So last month was the submission deadline, April 11th, for the building audit RFPs. We received three of those that we're reviewing individually. And then I think next week we'll be meeting with the CROC committee, which is comprised of our experts in the community who were very grateful for their services to us. They're architects, so they're going to help us decide on who we will choose to move forward with the building audit. Can you remind me of the date? May 17th. May 17th. Yes. At nine o'clock. If that works for you. Yeah. I have to check that. Cool. Check. Does that work for you? Yeah. Great. Okay. So great. Yep. That's it. Thank you. And well, thank oh, you. and you for the elevator you. update, Tom will give the update. <laughs> Always a pleasure. If not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is coming along. I'm happy to say, after many, 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 many months of um, being without an elevator um, uh, through a, a certain number of pitfalls and arguments, et cetera, um, the company in question is on site. Um, they have been here for about a week. They came back, um, which is a good thing. And uh, we're hoping that by the end of this week, or early next week, uh, the elevator will be functional. And oh. once it's functional, we do need it to be um, formally tested. You know, we need- I think uh, that's wise. Yeah, yeah, uh, all things considered. So um, I'm hoping that in a short period of time, our elevator will be back online. Um, at that point in time, I think uh, we will sort of consider the matter and see if we have to take other action. Um, we will see. But, uh, but things are moving forward. Uh, uh, the vendor was here today, made good progress. Frankly, every day we take photographs and we share it with our consultant. He will be visiting on Thursday just to make sure that everything is going the way it should, that we're going to have an elevator that has been installed correctly and will function without major problems for the next 20 years. So um, we're moving forward. Thank you. What in the basement? What's that? The water in the basement. You fixed it. That fixed? Um, the water in the basement, um, it, it has been fixed. The waterproofer did his job. We are still working with that. We implemented another solution for the actual, for the pit area, and, and that, has, that has been taken care of. It looks, it looks good. You know, it looks, it looks really good. So, um, <sighs> it's really exciting. It's really exciting. Yeah, it's it is exciting and long, long needed. And our apologies to the community and to the staff, frankly, um, where we had to go without an elevator, which is a real disservice to people who are older, who have problems with mobility, young families, um, et cetera. It's, it's, been, it's been a challenge, but you know, the community has understood 
and we have made accommodations whenever and wherever possible. Thank you, Tom. Uh, community relations. Okay, so community relations. I sort of have a, an ex a little extensive report here uh, with the budget vote uh, being around the corner. I want to highlight some important things that uh, have been happening. So April vacation week, all the vacation programs were well attended and appreciated. Uh, we had so many participants for the three workshops that they had uh, to run double shifts. A live theatrical performance and a visit from Animal Embassy were also filled to capacity. Uh, during the vacation week, programs are made possible by the Friends of the Rochelle Public Library. National Children's Book Week. Uh, thanks so much for the generous gifts from Sarah and Steve Sonnet in memory of their mother, uh, who was a former librarian, uh, conducted a fabulous week-long celebration of the 100th anniversary of National Children's Book Week uh, and the library's 125th anniversary. The Friends of the Library also gave significant support to this very successful, memorable event. Um, if you do not view the library's Facebook and Instagram posts, they're asking for a please, please make sure that you get on board. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words and the pictures from, um, from the week's events speaks volume. Children of all ages and their parents, caregivers, grandparents were engaged uh, music, movement, and storytelling. Each day, preschoolers were treated to a fabulous array of programs in the children's room, continuously decked out with a spectrum of 120th anniversary helium balloons. Uh, scores of children and adults danced, sang, heard stories, laughed a whole lot. On Wednesday, May 1st, 200, 200 uh, budding artists and their siblings, parents, grandparents visited the 30th annual Our Children Are Artists exhibit and then packed the theater for a brief ceremony. Uh, before enjoying homemade refresh refreshments from the children's books. On Saturday, May 4th, the library hosted over 200 children again, and this time families listened to a terrific author made party hats, books, and tambourines, and finger painted, uh, before parading with Bad Kitty and the Shinbound Alley Stilt Band. Oh, I saw pictures of that. <laughs> yeah. We have photos. Yeah, I, they were online or something. I yeah, saw those they're pictures. Pretty Through the Ruby D Park and into the Ozzy Davis Theater. Loads of noise and fun and over 200 homemade New Rochelle Public Library. Birthday cupcakes eaten by kids. Um, we don't even have the stats on how many kids took advantage of the book uh, fine amnesty, but we know that each of the principals announced in it in the elementary school and uh, about 5,500 flyers went home with students. That's, that's a lot. Can we have them? We, we got two. <laughs> Adult programming. Uh, the National Library Week began with an excellent Read 650 uh, forum, which featured top writers reading their five-minute pieces on my library. Zumba, yoga, needlework, cookbook club, open mic, teen programs, computer classes, and a super film series also took place in April. The AARP tax preparers wrapped up their free service, free service, service with which helped over 1,000 people to complete their tax forms. That's amazing, 1,000 pe people. And I repeat, for free. The Community Relations Office was also offered three stellar concerts of classical music and made possible by the Friends of the NRPL. So uh, community connection, and this goes back to the point we were talking about mental health and opioid. Um, NRPL uh, are hired our new community service specialist, Denise Link. I met, I met Denise Link uh, about a week or two ago, uh, and now has a regular schedule providing, um, and this goes into the article that I sent you guys about libraries having social workers in, in there. I don't know if you guys took the chance to read it, but she's pro uh, she has regular schedule providing one-on-one -on -one assistance to patrons in need of a wide range of services. So in her first full month, in the position, Denise helped 55 patrons connect with services to help find employment, housing and benefits, and guides them through an online application um, for employment, either SNAP benefits, certification programs, Section 8, and a host of other tasks. Denise will also help uh, patrons that are doing the task prep, formerly known as GED, and restarting a literacy program to be conducted by trained volunteers. So if you want to become a trained literacy, uh, uh, part of the trained literacy provider, uh, volunteer, you know, go into the uh, community relations office and definitely ask for that. And yeah. So how do we get Denise uh, 
Um, I don't want to, I think Denise is good here, so we don't want her to be at the schools, but how do we make sure the schools know that she's a resource? Um, in, how do we, because like, we can call somebody that goes into the whole. Right. So. PTA council? No. I mean, that's one way. I think um, that's a start. Okay. That's a start. I think also if we can, when we're distributing applications for library cards as well to kind of give information of that specific service. Um, I, I, think, I think part of, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Tom, not only her helping people, but I think because of this position, I mean, her efforts, she would probably have to head out in the community and let people yeah. know. The, the, the best way to, uh, for any kind of community type of service is showing up where the people are to know about the, the, the program for some time. Um, but when you continue on with the quality of services, like this is fantastic. In one month, 55 patrons connected to whole different yeah. services. This is good information. This is good of people feeling confident. And I believe she's bilingual. She is bilingual. And she's And bi she's bilingual. a long time New Rochelle resident, children through the school system. She's a great person. She's been a part-time employee for us for almost 20 years. And um, she just has jumped into the job with just a great um, spirit and success. And um, she, part of her job is to be on the floor, work in the help center and assist people as Dan um, um, articulated. But uh, the other aspect of her job, and, and probably that's where you met her, uh, Dan, was is to go into the community and make connections with the various nonprofit groups because we have so many relationships with uh, nonprofit organizations in terms of offering services. And we, we wanted one person to sort of manage it all and just keep up, you know, kind of keep it together. And um, honestly, Denise is just, she's so, new, but she's doing really well. I have an idea. For September, can we put together um, either a brochure, I'm thinking of like, a, you know, a deck card or something that each school gets and it says, what does New Rochelle Library have to offer you? Mm -hmm. And it has like the number of the children's library and it has kind of her number and like a quick reference card that um, each principal could get and they could put in their office or something like that. Do you think we could do that for September? It would be. Yeah, absolutely. Go I ahead. wonder if we also want to include the social workers that are at the schools or I know that some schools yes. share them, yes. but sometimes when it gets to the top, it doesn't trickle yeah. to the mm -hmm. place. But the social workers are probably connecting them to the resources. Right. Yeah. So I, I would even go further saying if perhaps she can host or the library, invite our school counselors and social workers to a quick sure. breakfast in the morning and talk about the services. I mean, so both, both. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think, I think, um, it'd be good to have, uh, for people at the schools to have like this quick reference, mm -hmm. like, what do you guys, you know, offer? Maybe are if they're kind of like, we don't do that. Maybe they do, but I think a breakfast too would be nice. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's just, it's, it's, it gives the opportunity to ask questions of how, you know, yeah. cause there are questions, you know, you can connect, um, but to know the person behind it is is is. So can you do that for September? Right. So um, um, the, I just want to restate to make certain I understand, Deirdre, what you're proposing is that we create almost like a ready reference sheet that uh, relates the various services that we offer um, children and families. Yeah. I'm thinking, and I can come in and talk to you about it. I'm yeah. not thinking of like a sheet like this. I'm thinking of more five by seven. like a trifold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a one that's... side, like it's a five by seven stock card. Yes. With just like that's the names of like even even the job readiness. This woman's Denise. Like bullet points. Very little words. You're you're yeah. like in and out. You just want yeah, yeah, like. Yeah. We can share. We can probably connect and just yeah. yep. like yeah. lay it out. Yeah, absolutely. We could work with. Um, uh, Denise and Barbara Davis, yeah. and we have a really great graphic designer at Roxanne yeah. Map. Oh, right. Yep, it yeah, all yeah. can be done easily. Okay. A little magnet. I, <laughs> yeah, you know, just something. Yeah, just to get us out there. Okay. Um, so the last last uh, uh, few things here. So in regards to resilience, uh, Westchester County uh, Department of Community Mental Health uh, will be doing a screening in conjunction with the Westchester Resilience Co Coalition. Uh, which is a coalition that seeks foster individual family co community resilience in Westchester County. Uh, a variety of different service providers are involved in that. So they're having a screening on resilience with uh, individuals, uh, professionals that are going to talk about it, an hour documentary with a discussion. 
um, and how resilience can be supported and strengthened in our commu communities um, and how our community can respond. That will be May 28th at, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Westchester County Department of Community Mental Health. Uh, that's in White Plains, Conference Room 217-1112 East Post Road. So if anyone is interested in just kind of seeing how um, it's not just talking about resilience, but how we as a community can, can address those issues and whatever um, level and partner and collaboration. Um, and then uh, the, 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 there's a, uh, for anyone that may be interested, um, it's being sponsored by WAPSI, so the Westchester, um, I'm trying to what Alliance for Black School Educators. Thank Wops, you. It's not Wopsy. 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 Um, they're hosting uh, a introduction to restorative practices completely for free, May 11th. I know it's a Saturday before Mother's Day, um, but it's completely free from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, they have a fantastic uh, trainer that uh, does the training for the entire New York City school, New York City district, um, and he um, is a former administrator from the New Rochelle Public Schools and um, is, is doing this introduction to re restorative pra practices. And, um, and the last two things is uh, for any youth that's looking for employment, summer youth employment applications are out, the Youth Bureau, the Guidance Center, uh, New Rochelle High School is going to be school hosting a youth uh, job fair on Friday the 10th. Um, so anybody wants to participate as an employer. And on May 20th, there's a lot of things going on on May 20th, mm -hmm. um, but they're inviting um, providers, educators, uh, um, any, anyone that is working with youth or young adults, uh, primarily young, young adults, um, to participate in a high-level learning and discuss, discuss symposium um, called Exploring Alternative Career Pathways. It's gonna be hosted at the White Plains High School uh, library media space, and it's done by the Westchester County Putnam Workforce Development Board, the Career Cent Centers. I, I have the privilege of being on that panel, so if you would like to join us for breakfast and hear engaging opportunities of why our middle skills jobs and young people or young adults are not having the skills to achieve in the workplace nowadays, um, you have um, uh, the president of Rockland Community College will be there, superintendent from White Plains, uh, Dr. Hamlet Carver, myself, uh, Teresita Whistle from Westchester Community College, um, and um, Oran Barrett, who's uh, uh, he's, he's, he created Cool Nerds Club. Um, it's moderated by Tom Kleiner from the county. So I would encourage you, if anybody has some time in that morning, May 20th, it's completely free. Everything's online. You can Google it. So. Thank you. Uh, finance Committee. I think we need to meet. My fault. We missed our last meeting. Do you have an update? No, I just looked at the numbers. There's nothing really. Okay. No news is good news in finance. <laughs> I think that's probably true. But we need to. We do need to meet to look at the, you know, the potential one-time expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Who's in finance? I think it's Chuck Daniel and it myself. It's Dan. <laughs> oh no, Corey, they know myself. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. all guys. I know. Yeah. I can't believe you did that. Who is that? I said yes. Wow. One, two, three. It's yeah. all bad. Man. Yeah. Boy, it's cool. I don't think that was <laughs> yeah. purposeful. That wasn't right. <laughs> um, Just, I'm like, <laughs> I usually have a keen eye for this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the needs uh, assessment committee. So we've been uh, working on just coordinating with the RFPs that were answered and coordinating our schedules, which have been pretty hectic because of spring break and travel obligations mm -hmm. so we opted to have a meeting after the election um to see who's here who's not <laughs> so, but um we're still moving ahead with it i've actually just personally taken on talking to a couple of local residents at ward and albert leonard and webster on what their needs were what they wanted to see i got a lot of feedback on um, the kids library and can we expand it and what are, how, what are the options there? You know, so different things, you know, why don't people know more about this library? and Why don't more people come here? So the Needs Assessment Committee is more um, about not just the development, but it's really what the people want. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we continue to have those conversations with the people mm -hmm. so we understand what they want. And so that goes beyond anything that any outside forces may have or want to have with the library. So um, we'll reconvene or 
will we'll reconvene after the election. So. Great, thank you. Uh, personnel committee. So Tom, I'm to say what you sent me? Yes. Okay. Um, so with the personnel, uh, Tom had some suggestions. Um, he wanted the personnel committee to review. Um, he wanted us to look at um, the two custodians first. Two of our custodi custodians have been working really over time, um, filling in other positions. Um, and so do you want to say a little bit I more? I do, I do, this? thank you, Deidre. Um, uh, as you've heard me talk quite a bit about our, our project in the circulation area, and we did not hire a project manager. We decided to uh, distribute the duties amongst ourselves. But what has turned out is while I've been very involved and our tech person has been involved and our head of circulation, our two custodians uh, functioned over and above and functioned not just as project managers, but actually as um, uh, con construction, construction, actually in construction roles that related to carpentry, could be electrical, uh, it just um, uh, across the board. And they did this while we were down uh, one of our full-time custodians due to his untimely illness. And um, they have worked really hard, in particular, Rob Florin, our lead custodian, but our, the other custodian, um, uh, uh, Mike Abruzzi as well. And they, they have just worked over and above and really out of job class. And we couldn't have gotten where we are right now and saved the money and did the great quality work. I think we will, we will all see and enjoy without their efforts. So it was my request that the personnel committee consider and recommend and then the board vote um, on um, a, a salary enhancement award for these two gentlemen who have been truly working out of class. Rob For Florin, our lead custodian, $1,000, and Mike Abruzzi, who is um, uh, one of the general custodians, uh, $500. And we happily approve that. Um, Bless you. Thank you. In addition, we just wanted to um, publicly acknowledge the 2019-20 salary increases, and these are outside of the um, contract. So um, they're all for 2.75 increase for Tom Giafino, Barbara Davis, and Jean Manning. Um, I would also mention, as far as Jean is concerned, that the increase be tied to what was agreed upon at the last board meeting. And I understand certainly that it has to be looked at on a year by year basis, that the increase um, also include the li uh, librarian three step increase using the same mechanism as we would any other employee. Yes, yeah. And we're gonna look at that. And in addition to that, you will be doing- Evaluations for, for those two people. And I'm working, I have a, I found a series of service um, evaluations and the personnel committee like one in particular. So we're going to be going forward with that. And I'm also encouraging that when we negotiate our next union contract, that we have service evaluations so that all supervisors can evaluate their employees, not in order to provide punitive um, uh, damage, but just to start a conversation. And it doesn't have to be tied to any sort of financial element, but I think um, something that we should really have in place. Certainly it's been my experience in all the other places I worked, but and I think we're ready to consider that as well. Well, we don't do reviews, so you guys know. No. We have don't do reviews in this um, on, on this team. And as we started, as we did Tom's evaluation, as we started talking, we realized, um, we all realized some of the feedback we got from the staff is how much they love Tom and they'd love to hear his feedback because mm -hmm. they respect and value him so much. So we are trying to build that into how we work going forward right. in the personnel community. And, and, and it really wouldn't like be that. just necessarily uh, tied only to myself and my, yep. the staff that report to me, but it would be mm -hmm. the librarians threes to the librarian yep. ones or the twos, or the senior clerks to the clerks that work underneath them. It would right. be a whole process where conversations would begin that would relate to, you know, work and how well it's being done and 
um, uh, construction, constructive criticism, goals, objectives. Like vision, and I think part of the, the you can, it's so much going on and appreciating how much the library, it's not just books. We all know that. We can all concede that. But just as we think of visioning and working with our fundraising partners, ways to sort of identify big goals and needs that we can get the community behind to help improve the library. And so I, we're excited. I think that was part of the impetus. We were just excited to sort of see that documented somewhere and keep yeah, moving it along. Makes sense. So that's all I have. So we need a motion. So the motion to say the motion again is on the bonuses, the thousand dollars and the five hundred for the custodians, and the increase for Barbara Davis, Tom Giafino, and Jean Manning. So I'd like should I make the motion? Yeah. I'd like to make a motion um, for the salaries and bonuses I just spoke of. <laughs> Second. All those all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Marvelous. Marvelous. Thank you all. Thank Motion you. Pass, I'm done. On behalf of our staff, who deserve it. Thank you. Our pleasure. Policy, we just set a meeting time for Tuesday. So we'll be able to report back in June. Do you, do you want me to tend to Tuesday? The um, I think you can send. We have the, it's, we have the still finalized sexual harassment and the, and the fund, fund balance. balance. But if you want to send us the, pol the the, the suggestion regarding the over the overly and fees, there's the a overly, fees, the fees, the fees and there's a few other yeah. things because okay. I think we're going to be meeting in the evening so okay. it's not can it's I, not can right. I just uh, make a let's see if this is something that the posse can uh, committee can review I was speaking to a couple of um, you know community members from Rochelle um, as to why some of them do not use our library and they would prefer to go to Larchmont or yep. somewhere. And one of the things is not only we know that we have to pay for parking in the city and that's nothing that we can control, but one of the things is the holds on books. We don't have yeah, that exactly. any longer. We got rid of that. We got, okay. rid of that. got rid of that. So did we, did we, I mean, how do we get the information it, it out? Wasn't I just a wanted newsletter, to make sure. Because I remember bringing it to okay. my church and talking about it. <laughs> right. That's why I was like, no, 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 I haven't. But maybe we can do better getting it out. Because I do agree with you. It, there's, that's still a miss. Yeah, because I had someone books. like, yeah, I don't go, I don't, yeah. no need to go to downtown um, uh, because, it's you know, they live on the east the end of, right. and they're like, I'll just swing over Larchmont, you know, I don't have to pay for parking and I have to pay for a hold, so it's not happening. Mm -hmm. so. You know, a big ticket item for the needs assessment committee, that this is like big lofty goal is, you know, if we could ever do something to offset some of the parking, it would just be yeah. wonderful. I heard that. Um, so I don't know what it could be, but I'm sure there's something out there if we put our brains together, it would be wonderful. You know, it's interesting, Princeton uh, Public Library, a number of years ago, renovated, probably 15 years ago, and they entered into this relationship w with the city and a developer, and they were able to have access to a, a parking garage and provide um, sort of like a stamp discount. I mean, that's yeah. the sort of thing. Like yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a validation. A right. I mean, if we're dreaming big, I, th I that's one of the complaints we hear time and time again, time. Yeah. that people have to pay for parking and that it seems unfair and there are other options where they can access libraries at, at no fee. I if think it would be great. If they're just going somewhere else. Well, some do and some don't. I mean, or some do go both ways. You and know, if, it's interesting. If grocery stores and supermarkets, get, if you shop at their place, they can stamp your your yeah. thing for your first three hours or whatever it is. You know, by purchasing, we can. I think there's a possibility you know to figure even, something out. And it's even maybe that's something the friends can do. I mean, we should really think about you know how we're asking them to use the money they use, and are there ways to be thoughtful about it. So it's just something to think about because I do think it's a it's a big issue. It's a huge issue. Yeah, I think it's a huge issue. So the special projects. Special projects. Special committee. Um, we don't really have an update about the uh I did see this. Yep. Um Yep, we are still, there's, the the premise of what I'm talking about is that there was an idea, first there was a um, potential donation to the library of large outdoor sculptures, which inspired us to start thinking about uh, where we might put them. And then when we found a place, it inspired us to think even bigger um, and potentially create a sculpture garden. So not just you know, one or two, but invite um, other artwork into our library uh, grounds. Um, and we we then kind of were 
working in tandem with the foundation, the library foundation, um, who created a kind of a rendering, a mock-up. Um, and, um, and that's kind of where we are. So there's, there's no further information about donations. Not sure if the original donations will actually come to pass, but I think the outcome of um, this process is to, to recognize that, um, that we could really beautify the courtyard on the Memorial Highway um, and create uh, a place to invite art and appreciate art on our library grounds. Um, and that's it for the committee. But I will say one um, other art related plug, which is that and, and uh, Marjorie and, and uh, Dorothy helped me find my daughter's um, artwork, which is out there <laughs> in the lobby, which is, you know, that's a proud mom moment. So thank you. Thank you. Is there any support that you need from the board or from Tom on this, on this sculpture garden thing or not? Tom and I are going to speak. Okay. Um, and then if there is, we will certainly let you know. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. And then um, as we do each year around the time of the election, we have to reappoint um, officers to the board. So we're not doing that tonight because obviously the election has not occurred. Um, but uh, we need to form a nominating committee and I'm going to um, pass it along to my vice president to make a, a, a recommendation. recommendation. And the role of the nominating committee is to nominate the slate of officers for the coming year, which will happen after the election. Um, so the recommendation for the three people for the nominating committee is, first of all, Chuck, who um, will not be an officer. But I actually think it's a good it's idea. Yeah, no, I think it's a good idea for the past <laughs> president to actually be on the nominating committee. They understand everything um, from kind of a high view. Um, Whitney and Daniel, um, who've just been on the board long. Um, so that's my recommendation. Is that a motion? I make a motion to recommend um, Chuck, Whitney, and Daniel for the nominating committee. All those in favor? Uh, All those opposed? So you all will need to meet. Do they meet after the election then? Yeah, I think that would make sense. And obviously if there's any outcome that negates one of the members from being on the We'll deal with Such that as, then. Yes. <laughs> but you'll, you, so know that that's the nominating committee, y'all will we'll, meet. We'll deal with that. Things happen. Things happen. Things yeah, yeah, happen. Yeah, that's what it's like. It's a G version. Yeah. So then we have the public. Yes, so next item of business is the public to be heard. Uh, first person on the list is Marjorie Sachs. Okay. Uh, Dan Miller. Okay. Uh, Beth Akasella. <laughs> this is an uneventful yeah, poem to be heard. Have anything to say? I'm very disappointed. <laughs> she already um, spoke, I think. Well, Her name was on there before. Tonight. I think we are, uh, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. I'm second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.